Hello my soccer universe, last review video for the 22-23 club season, let's get it done, I actually wanted to do that video a little bit sooner, however there were some developments yesterday that I knew were coming and then an additional one that I thought it was worth waiting for, so apologies for that, but I'll get this video out relatively soon after. Um, I'm very not, not survived, I'm not losing any team from the collection. Uh, for next season, so that was happy news for me. We had a crazy finish to uh, the French season in the sense that there was, um, you know, the, the relegation matter was uh, was kind of settled. Although the game, uh, the, not the Nantes game, the <laughs> the Auxerre game was kind of crazy, but also the final results in the chase for the last European spot as well as what was happening up top on the table was really 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 nuts we also had had of course two playoff um branches uh, deciding the last conference league spot in the netherlands and we also had for relegation where i think in the rel in the relegation slash promotion playoffs we had a small surprise uh the other one went more or less as planned i gotta say with 20 securing that spot therefore they are up there and yeah, I think uh, I had a rather successful season overall. Um, I will also do at the end, I add two more leaks that I just want to get in the playoff results, but you know, let's uh, wait for it at the end. But let's start with the last round in France, which yes, it's already two, uh, nah, it's a bit more than a week ago, but it feels like forever. But uh, we had some really, really crazy results. First of all, it was between uh, Rennes, Monaco and uh, Lille, who will go for the last Euro Europa League spot and for the last Conference League spot. And Rennes put down a marker beating uh, Brest 2-1, Burigo scoring both goals in the first half. There was an equalizer by Brest. So they basically said, okay, we are securing that, that, that one, although they were uh, more or less on the outside a little bit looking in. Uh, Lille. On the other hand, uh, only managed a 1-1 draw. Uh, they had the lead at Troyes, a Troyes team that was already relegated. Uh, but had, of course, the last home, home game where Ronnie Lopez gets a late equalizer, meaning that Lille would have been on the brink if Monaco would not have completely wetted the bed by losing 2-1 at home to Toulouse. Now, I have to say, I have to qual qual qualify that by saying that Toulouse is a really, really good team, uh, especially this season. However, it's still a surprise that Toulouse uh, could beat Monaco when there's so much on the line for Monaco. And this is one thing. Um, during the season, there was a time when I really thought that Monaco actually could mount even a challenge for the Champions League spots. Uh, but whenever it counted this season, Monaco were a no-show uh, also in Europe where they didn't make it to the Champions League, they didn't, um, they didn't uh, beat Le Leverkusen and so on. And uh, it's kind of a really disappointing season, of course, uh, their, um, their uh, coach Clement got, of course, duly sacked after that. And one can understand why that happened. So we have Rennes and Lille making up the last two spots with Rennes going, of course, to the Europa League. Then for relegation, uh, Nantes got the win over Angers, but that was a rough one. Gonna go in the 16th minute and hanging on more or less. Um, and every, everything was hinging on the result in Auxerre. And that was a nuts game. I mean... Um, Lars showed up and played full and actually controlled most of the game. Had a 1-0 lead uh, at the half that was very well deserved. And when Claude Maurice made it 2-0 in the 40th minute, you thought this is done. Uh, that was already a pretty bad goalkeeping mis mistake, misjudging completely the ball and then Claude Maurice can put it into his own, uh, uh, into the empty net. And the game seemed to really, it's 2-0, there's no chance. And then the last goalkeeper uh, kind of juggles the ball and it falls to Nyang and puts it in the in, in internet. And then it was really, there were, <laughs> there were uh, a, 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 a few chances. But then uh, Lars seemingly scored a 3 1, doesn't count for off offset, but then Openda gets the 3 1. Again, goal, goalkeeping mistake there. It was absolutely crazy. And then in the 95th minute, because at that moment, um, I think Osea only needed the draw as far as I remember. Let's uh, check that, uh, that one. 
Ja, yeah. also, yeah, need, 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 need the draw to survive. They, in stoppage time, which we, we, we is kind of long, they got uh, even a goal, but again, it was uh, offside, but that took a whole long while. So, um, it was more exciting to watch Osea against Lost than the other, other game, of course, than celebrations in not uh, surviving the season, um, making the Cup Cup final, being beaten badly by, by, by Toulouse. Last season, they were uh, really good. This season, they were in Europe. Maybe this would have played a part in, in it, because the season before, if you remember, they also almost got relegated they only survived in the relegation playoffs and then we also gotta talk about uh the other two top teams marseille losing the last game of the season at ajaxo and psg having a 2-0 lead in the 21st minute through ramos header and Kylian mbappe penalty and what do they do they managed to lose against clermont ferrand this deservedly so absolutely deservedly so um, they scored an early goal that will have made a one, which will have been a hand handball. Then uh, Garcia gets the two one. Then they miss a penalty. Still, Stefan may make maybe gets the two and then a uh, key. Uh, uh, very uh, late on. Um, uh, no, late on sixty thirty minute. Make may may exit three two and it could have been more. It was an absolute no show and it was so anticlimactic. If they win, I think the title celebrations after would have looked completely differently. Um, but so, you know, you had your Messi's boot, you had your Neymar's boot. I mean, everyone got, 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 got the trophy. No one really won wanted that. And now with the news that Messi is departing, Neymar definitely, they want him out. Uh, it already looked a little bit like the era of the superstars is over. And now to add to the sinking ship feeling for PSG, Although they have a certain Julian Nagelsmann coming potentially in with Thierry Henry, which is something that I, I, I would like to see, honestly. But Kylian Mbappé informed the club uh, just yesterday that he will not extend his contract. Meaning it expires at the end of the season. They were really hoping for that contract renewal. Um, but now they have two options. Either they try to sell him and get ca uh, cash in on some money or he lives for free next season. Not a good CAA situation. PSG is in a real cluster mess. And at this moment, PSG is the team with the most titles in France. No other team has 11 titles. Second one is saint Etienne with 10. And it doesn't feel like cell celebration. This should be, this should have been by all rights, a celebration. It was not. It was the discontent by the PSG ultras that I totally un un understand. Because at this moment, PSG, is not about uh, winning Liga as they've done that so often. It's all about the Champions League, where they again failed to deliver, especially in the terms of Messi and so on. Then Messi also giving an interview that he was not happy in Paris, blah, blah, blah. What can I say? It is an absolute mess there. And yeah, watch, keep your popcorn. But I have a feeling that PSG is kind of... Let's see what they will, will do so. But at the moment, I have a feeling that PSG is a sinking ship and their Champions League dreams look further away however maybe you need to get rid of all the mess and build a new let's see watch this space for sure with all that we have now the final standings here in france um all pretty 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 much set uh, as as i said uh nantes and osea have uh uh, non not and uh, has survived ahead of osea, osea psg Lance and marseille are uh, in the Champions League, must OM have to go through the qualification process, then in the Europa League, League, in the Conference League. And so we also see this in the season starts summary. In the Europa League, we also have cup winners to lose. So a uh, second a year in a row where the actual uh, winner, uh, the actual cup winner is not qualifying through the top five or top six. So that makes it definitely interesting. And we also have four relegated teams because League 1, is reducing its size, which I think is a really, really good idea. Yeah, 18 teams is a much better league. Coming up is Le Havre, uh, which will make my friend Idris not very happy uh, for that, because it's, of course, the arrival of uh, Carr, his team, and then Mets. But that was also not, not clear, because uh, there was a chance that uh, Bordeaux could also come up again. Uh, however, in their game at Rodez, uh, where Rodez actually needed also win to avoid relegation, uh, after Rodez score 1-0, a fan from Bordeaux stormed on the field, kind of shoved a Rodez player, 
and um, the game was abandoned after. Honestly, it's not good that a fan comes on to, to the field, but it did not see. I mean, uh, when you read new, uh, news outlets, it sounds like that he went and beat. No, it was a shove. Should not have done that. But it was not so uh, violent as it was portrayed. In any case, uh, the game was abandoned. It is now counted. The verdict came down as a 1 0 win uh, for Rodez. So Bordeaux are not coming up. Metz are come, come, coming up. And um, I think Rodez secured survival with that. If we look at winners and losers, uh, we have, of course, when we compare the preseason points expectation and the actual points, uh, it is the first thing is, of course, PSG has a negative one, but that doesn't come as a surprise. But uh, the big winners, loss, 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 loss. Also, Clermont and Lorient doing way better than expected. Uh, on the negative side, of course, we have Monaco, we have Lyon, PSG, but of course, everyone in the bottom part of the table is, of course, a big loser themselves. Uh, I'm looking especially at Nantes, Strasbourg, Angers. Those are two teams, uh, those are three teams that were actually expected to be up, the, um, you know, they were for a long time in Ligue 1 and now they were in the relegation trouble, if not being relegated and if you look now also the change in ratings we see here that PSG got an even bigger hit at the mo uh, at the preseason uh, with their rating they should have gotten 89 points now they would only go get 77 still the best team in France but as I said sinking ship similar story for Monaco and again we see Nantes, uh, Troyes and Angers also taking a hit winners of course Lens, Lille, Clermont those are the big, the big stories and, you know, then a big, big midfield also with rather positive performances. Uh, let's look at the playoffs for the um, um, relegation in the Ned Ned Netherlands, where we have Almere City coming up. Almere are from Flevoland. And if you don't know what Flevoland is, this is dredged up uh, islands in the Eiselmeer close to Amsterdam, you know, based basically new, newly made. They... Had a little bit of luck against Fenlo, um, uh, beating them on penalties. However, in the final against Emmen, who had no trouble with Breda, uh, they beat them rather convinc convincingly, even having a 2 0 lead in the return leg. So, uh, Almere City is newly promoted to the Eredivisie. Uh, in the um, uh, Conference League uh, playoffs, though, uh, we had, um, you know, it was going 20th way with no trouble disposing of uh, Herrenwein. Uh, the 2-1 away from home was right now and then was a rather decisive 4-0. Utrecht and Sparta was a much closer affair with Sparta winning the first leg 2-1. Uh, Utrecht the second one, it goes to penalties and you see the result is of course that Sparta moved on. So we had uh, fourth and fifth uh, getting into there. And then in the end, uh, Twente go through. I mean, it was a little bit, I, I, I don't want to say lucky because Twente were, were, were the better team. But in the uh, first leg, Van Groy penalty gave Sparta the lead. And very late on, Zaruki, 93rd minute, gets an equalizer. Uh, I saw large proportions of the, of, of the return leg where it was more or less all Twente for most of, of, of the time until... It was actually the one nil through Berenay, which was a nice shot that got a little bit uh, deflected in. Uh, then there were some chances for Sparta, but in the end, 20 hang on and uh, secure Europe for, for the next season. There was, of course, also um, uh, Brahma, uh, 20 legend, who won the title with them um, in the 20, uh, 29. 29 or 2010, some, 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 some of the 2029, I, I, I think. Uh, so Club Legend also said his goodbyes there, which of course was teeny bit emotional. So here we have the Dutch season summary um, with Feyenoord winning the title, PSV winning the cup and Ajax only in the Europa League group stage, uh, where they may be joined by PSV because that's what has been happening as of late, although it would be good for the Dutch to get two. Teams in the Champions League, AZ and Twente, make it to the Conference League. Relegated Groningen, Cambuur and Emmen and upcoming Heracles and Zwolle, who just got relegated last season, and Almere City as a new team, which kind of is exciting. Uh, Feyenoord and Sparta Rotterdam, so it was a really good season for Rotterdam teams, which you also see when you look at the change in ratings um, overall, but there's also Twente in there. Ajax this season, complete disaster. Ajax were... Uh, you don't see that often. Let's put it, let, let us put it that way. The question is, will it continue? 
because uh, at least Arne Slot is staying with Feyenoord, so I'm curious how to see how this will go going forward. Um, I said two more. I want to give you the relegation playoff in Portugal, where Estrela de Amadora make it up, winning a penalty against Maritimo. Uh, so Maritimo is go are, are going down. Estrela de Amadora come come coming up. So another new team that we have there. And I want to finish in Austria. I actually saw a little bit where we had surprisingly Austria Lustner play Austria Vienna for the last Conference League spot. What undid Austria Lustner were two things: a three games in the space of a week. The first game being on Monday, the last game on Sunday. However, they did really well. Although they basically had no business beating Wolfsburg, uh, who got a late penalty. Then they equalized with the with the first shot on goal, and then they won in overtime. Uh, they held a very credible draw against Austria Vienna, where a probably they should, they should, they should have won, but an uh, early red card in the return leg sent things Austria Vienna's way after the red red card. Austria from free kick immediately makes it 1 0, and then it was a done deal. So yeah, just adding these two on. Uh, let me know what you thought about all the happenings in uh, Ligue 1 and the Eredivisie. I'm putting a wrapper on a 22-23 club season. A long season. A really long season with the World Cup in between. Uh, I'm actually glad. Well, it would be nice to have a summer tournament. Yes, we get the Women's World Cup in a summer tournament, but it coincides more or less with the start of the 23-2024 season. Uh, I'm really happy that we get a little bit of a break. Yes, there's some international break and, and, and so on, but it's time to take a little a little bit of break from club football and I think that's a good thing. If you want to watch, of course, you can watch the MLS with Messi probably coming soon. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.